in his adopted hometown of San Diego. What a treat this is. The one and only Dominic Cruz, kind enough to join us. There he is. What's happening, Dom? How are you? Going on, Ariel. All right, we got a lot to discuss. Big week for you, Dominic. How did you feel when they? By the way, can you can you can you help me out? I was kind of annoying you about this. True or false? Original plan wasn't San Diego for this fight. Am I wrong or am I wrong? I actually don't know, man. I don't know where they were going to have it. I was just um, trying to set a date. I, a date was important to me more than the place. I wanted it to not be, uh, I wanted it to be in front of fans and I wanted a date where I felt healthy and got my rounds in and I got that. So it ended up just being in San Diego. I don't know if it was just perfect timing or what, but it worked out. So this is all perfect for you. The date that you wanted, the city, obviously you don't have to travel, right? How far do you live from that stadium, that arena? Um, about, about 15 minutes on, oh my a, on a good traffic day. And I train, I train one block from there. Oh my gosh. Wow. I can walk, I can walk to, to, to the arena where I train. Are you staying at the hotel? Um, I want to see the hotel first. <laughs> yes. You never really know where they're going to put us, Yes, but, um, we'll see. And, you know, I'm not going to say anything other than that. We'll see where it's at. And then I'll decide. I do like. I do like being in, in that scenario though. So I, I, there's a good chance I will. Yeah. So, uh, you like the date, uh, obviously the city. What about the opponent? How did you feel about the opponent? You know, it, in the end you got, he's ranked higher than me. That was the goal. Yeah. I wanted somebody ranked higher than me. And, um, when you get, the reason is when you get somebody ranked higher than you, you're going to face them in the near future anyway. So on your way up the ladder, you got to face these guys. So yeah, that's fine. It wasn't like a preference on the person as much as the date, um, being around fans, and somebody ranked above me. All those things happen. I'm a happy camper. I'm doing the best I can here. Were you hoping for title shot? Were you holding out hope? I didn't. I don't really have an expectation of that because can't. You got to just kind of show up and do your job. Right. Um, Marlon, as of late, I mean, you 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 study, you know the sport. You like, would you consider him a step up from the guys that you fought in your last two fights? I would, because um, of his streak and his confidence right now from his wins, it makes him very dangerous. Impressed? Of course. Yeah. I mean, I've called a few of his fights. Um, I'm very impressed with him and his his rise and how he's shown up, you know, he's going to be a, a, a great adversary to prepare me for the rest of the line. I mean, if you look at the line above him, it doesn't get any easier. Right. <laughs> That's for sure. So it's like anybody in the top 10, it's not like literally anybody in the top 10 is super difficult. You just have to um, deal with different weapons, different skill sets and, and adjust to that. You guys cool. I'm cool with him. Who knows what he's thinking? I try not to, um, I try not to worry about that. I just try to be me. You know, you can only control, I can only control myself. I've seen him. I've worked alongside him a million times and there's never been, I mean, he always had a little bit of like, uh, he would always kind of come around and like poke at me, Okay. Like, but it wasn't, I just never really bit because I'm not really attached. It, it doesn't, I'm just here one day at a time being what I got to be to make it work every day. And if this is it, this is it. If he doesn't like me, I can't control that either. I mean, I'm just, I got no problem with him. I have respect for him. I love what he's done. I've seen him um, on the bottom of the division, rise to the top. How can you not respect that? By the way, when you say poke, do you mean like physically poke or just like say things that try to get under your skin? That. Ah, uh, like what? I don't know. Just You've annoying stuff. That done you, Aaron? No. Me yet Everyone's so nice to me. Come on. Everyone's so nice to me. <laughs> the best, the best way I could put it is kind of like uh, think of um, Rampage Jackson in you. Ah, uh, I said well, that's a good one. That's a good. Okay, it's I, not, it's not like specific, but it's kind of like poke, poke. Do you feel like they made this fight in order for him to get the win over the legend, or do you feel like it's like equal footing? I don't know what the UFC is thinking. Um, I try not to jump into my interpretations because that's where you got, you got no peace in those. I try to stick to the facts. I don't really have a factual answer for that. So I'm, I, I don't know what to tell you, but 
it's easy to fall into an interpretation on that if you want to, that's for sure. What what would that interpretation be? Good question. What do you think it is, Ariel? Well, historically, like the classic Joe Silva fight was always like the young up and comer, youngish up and comer against the legend. That's how you get the the young guy over, right? You put the legend in there. But the thing is, you're not on like a losing streak. You're on a winning streak. I mean, so the, I actually, because I don't think it applies to this fight, if I'm being honest, for two reasons. You're on the winning streak. You're at home. Uh, if it was him at home, try to make him into a star off of you, then I would say yes, and you're on the losing streak. It's not the case. I actually feel like this is like an appropriate two guys. Obviously, you've been around way longer, but you're at similar spots in the division. So I don't feel like there's any sort of hidden agenda here. You know what I'm saying? Aligned with that 100. percent All right. <laughs> I heard you say that you feel like he's always mad. It looks like that to me, but he seems like, like a happy-go-lucky also- guy. No, well, may I don't know. Just look at his interviews talking about me. He doesn't seem yes. very happy-go-lucky about me. He was on this so show and he was talking about you. He was very upset. He was very fired up. He thought you yeah, didn't want to fight him, and here you are. Yeah. It's easy to fall into interpretations. How do you feel about... That's what this sport does. What do you mean? Well, that's what happens. I mean, you got you to gotta remember, it's not clear communication between fighters as it, as it could be. So um, you've got a matchmaker, you've got managers. Who knows what the matchmaker is saying to the manager? Then who knows what the manager is saying to the fighter? Right. Whereas I represent myself. I talk to the matchmaker directly. Um, so it's like, I'm pretty clear. I never, I just, I told you, I want the date. I want somebody ranked above me and I want the, and that's it. And if the date doesn't align with the timing of the person, I could see how they might think that I don't want to fight them, but maybe they just want to fight at a different date than I do. Right. So it's okay. I can't blame the guy for thinking that way if that's what he wants to think, but it's not necessarily true either. Cause obviously we're here. You didn't always manage yourself, right? Um, I don't necessarily manage myself. I just represent myself is the best way to put it. That's fair. Um, I, commun- I communicate for myself. But it, would that, was that always the case? Like even dating back to when you were a champ? No, I've had to learn. I've been in the game for 16 plus years. So it's like after a while you build some relationships with people and you understand, you know, I've got a good relationship with Sean Shelby in the sense of communication. Mm. If he wants to talk to me, he can reach out to me. And I think a lot of us fighters can do that with Sean Shelby whenever we want. You just got to have the webos to do it Mm. because he's a talker and he knows how to get under your skin and he knows how to throw this guy at you. And, you know, so, but with Shelby and me, we're pretty, pretty clear line communication. And, and with that, I can get to the point and here we are. Would you uh, recommend for most fighters to have that kind of relationship? Like rather than having a middleman or woman? I think in the UFC, we're signed to a six fight contract. Are we not four fight contract right. usually yeah. at the lowest? So why would I pay somebody for four fights when it's set after one? Right. That doesn't make sense to me. And then on top of that with a manager, how, how are they supposed to be bringing me in sponsors if the UFC dictates the sponsors? So now UFC dictates the sponsors and UFC dictates the contract. So what is a manager actually doing? They're just talking and creating the communication. And what managers are good at, from my experience, is making it seem like they have all the hookups. But in the UFC, what hookups can you get when the UFC makes the decisions for you? Now, if you're in Bellator, if you're in PFL, if you're in any of these other organizations, it makes perfect sense for me, for to me, for a fighter to have a representation because sponsors can get brought, they can build relationships elsewhere. They can have a lineup of, of like 10 fighters. And because one manager has a lineup of 10 fighters, sponsors might come to them directly and say, hey, do you have anybody? So then it makes sense. But in the UFC, how many sponsors are even allowed in the UFC? Very few. And they're already decided by the UFC. So the UFC sponsors who they want. And the UFC um, makes the contract. So for me, after, one, after the manager um, renegotiates my contract, from one fight, I feel like I'll pay them on that. And then from there I can do the communication from, for myself because it's already the the contract set. It's only going to go up a certain amount each fight from there. And that's already dictated after the first conversation. So managers really only having one conversation 
and it's getting and is getting paid out for four fights. That doesn't make sense to me. How close have you ever gone to fighting out your contract? Um, pretty close. Really? Yeah, twice. When was yeah. that? I renegotiate my contract um, when I get within one or two fights of the end of it. Generally, um, I try to if if the UFC is open to it, and they've always been willing to work with me. Um, I just don't talk like a prick. <laughs> You mean like make it public or to them as as a prick? Yeah. Yeah, just don't either or. Right. Like don't, you know, just if you want to it's really easy if you just talk to the talk to Hunter, talk to Sean Shelby, they're very open to listen to you if you can create the conversation from a neutral place. Mm-hmm. It's when you come at them all crazy, I deserve this. I did, you just got to come from a neutral place. Nobody deserves anything. You earn everything you get in this sport. So, you got to understand they're running a business. I've been doing this so long. I've watched the UFC build themselves from Spike TV to Versus to Fox to ESPN. Like I know what they've done. They're worldwide. They're international. Like it's it's incredible the business model that they've that they built into. Sold to WMG, uh, WME, IMG, or whatever yep. that long acronym is. Um, just the steps that they've taken. How can you not respect the UFC as a business? That they're pretty. They're pretty smart. Do you watch other MMA too? Yeah. Or I don't know. Like, there's some guys who are like, "Ugh, if I'm not working it or fighting on the card, I want nothing to do with it." You enjoy watching, like, just being a fan and watching. I am a fan. I'm definitely a fan. I've said this on other interviews. I'm really a fan of everybody in the UFC. I'm a fan of all and then mixed martial arts because I'm a martial artist. Um, it might be hard to understand that because I still fight but you know as a commentator too you kind of have to be a fan right uh if you're not then you're kind of making it about you from my perspective and and being a commentator isn't about you it's about the athletes that's really important to me because i've been on the other side as a fighter where the commentator is just talking and they have no idea what i'm doing because they haven't watched any film and they're just saying what they think so it's like you got to do the work in the sense of knowing what these athletes are doing and the work that they put in and the, the strategies do the best. I, I try to do the best I can to understand the strategies that they're implementing by watching. And I have to watch from a fan's perspective, which is a beginner's mindset and open perspective, not a, I already know, not a place of knowledge, but a place of like transformation so that I can hear what they have and, and ingest it. Not just think that I know it all already before I watch them. Because if I know everything before I watch them, then there's no space to learn what they're teaching me to explain their styles. Do you like, you know, like you guys do those meetings and stuff like that, those uh, fighter meetings? Do you like picking their brain? Do you like talking to the fighters? I do. You do? I do, yeah. I enjoy it because I enjoy doing it one-on-one more. I used to do it one-on-one with the clipboard and I remember to them. You would show up to the media day. Yeah, I, I like doing that better because I feel like they talk to me better. When you get the big group, you got people who are on there that are turning their phones off and they're moving and it just kind of takes away the intimacy of the connection of the relationship building process of the athlete. And sometimes you don't get the same information, but that's just my experience. It's not a fact either. No. Um, DC turns his phone off for sure. DC turns his phone off. Could He could. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw in the pot. I'm just kidding. Um, what about? Oh, I'm not you, Stern. No, oh, come, come on. on. What, what about the uh, the the like the rules meeting that you guys had, the seminar, whatever you want to call it? Was that was that effective in your opinion? Well, um, effective. I think it was effective for the person who set the meeting because they wanted it to be effective. So for them, if it was effective, it was effective. For me, where I stood, I feel that um, there's a there's a man that was on the phone, didn't show up and just talked to us, didn't even have his face on there and just talked to us through a microphone and told us that we were to just trust the people that were reading the analytics and that we were supposed to trust that those people reading the analytics understood the sport, but we didn't get to see them, know who they are, know anything about them. To me... It's like you can have the biggest, baddest gadgets on earth, but if the people 
reading the move can't understand what the move is. What's the point of pushing the button to say what it is? Do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's a takedown, but the person's watching the fight doesn't know what a takedown is. They can push takedown, but they didn't even know what it was. So I'm supposed to just trust that these people behind this make pushing for the analytics know what they're doing, but um, the proof is in the results. And uh, did you learn anything? I learned that um, we are to trust <laughs> some higher power that knows everything. L- you remember you, last time you were on the show when we were talking about like officials and stuff, I got a call from Mike Mazzuli. You know, Mike Mazzuli, he's the head of the ABC commission. Oh, he was mad at me. He was like, why didn't you do this? Why did you, Dom saying this, da, 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 da. you were talking about the people who don't have uh, you know, a background and all that. You remember, you know what I'm talking about? He was not happy about that. You ever That's hear from him? No, I mean, I don't know what there would be to not, not. I don't know why he wouldn't be happy. He can jump on this show anytime he wants and put his face out there and say what he wants to say anytime. And I, from what I understand, I don't think you'd have a problem with that. So, um, on top of that, what's there to defend if nothing's going on? Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, I didn't offer him the spot on the show, but maybe I. Are you saying I should? Maybe him that's what. Maybe that's what he wants. Maybe yeah. let him. We have him on when I'm on here. I'll be happy to talk to him. You would do that? You would debate him? Oh, that would be incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah, heart. Can we do that? Sure. Oh my God. That would be incredible TV. You debating the head of the ABC? Let's go, Mike. All right. <laughs> All right. The challenge has... I'd be, happy to hear you out. I'd be happy to hear you out from a neutral space. Let's see if you can do that too. All right. So after this fight, we'll set it up. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about San Diego? You haven't fought in the UFC in San Diego. Last time was WC days, right? You like Some people don't like fighting close to home. There's pressure. There's people asking for tickets, blah, blah, blah. How do you feel about it? Yeah, you take a deep breath. Yeah, I just saw it. Everything you just said is very true, very real. But, you know, in this position, I always try to look at it from a different framework, which is I belong to the people when you choose to, to fight and do this, you belong to people to, to an extent you can choose to resist it or you can choose to belong to the people. And when, you know, I belong to the people to an extent. So, um, how do I make it about them? I do the best I can to be what I need to do to make it work. And that's just take a deep breath. And, uh, when they ask for tickets, let them know, I don't have any and they can go online and get them. I feel like you're in a very zen-like state right now. This is, uh, I, I like this, Dom. Thanks. I just, I'm trying to just be present because, you know, you can't really, like I said, you can't control, the, the ultimate illusion for us is control, right? We think we control these things. Like you said about these people, if I was trying to control all these people, if I was trying to control them calling me, I can't. So it's like, I mean, just got to kind of surrender to it all and just let it, happen and adjust as it comes because otherwise i'm going to get all wound up and what's the point of all that um just got to let go of control have you always been this way on the monday before fight or is this something that's developed over time i think it's definitely developed over time i'm older i've been through a lot of ups and downs Ariel. i've lost Mm -hmm. been a loser i've been a winner i've been a champion i've been um a prelim main eventer. I've been every position you could possibly be from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder. And the consistent thing that I know is that you see the same people up on uh, the same people on the way down as you do on the way up. Hmm. So just be, be the best you can for the people around you. Cause um, you're going to see those people again. It, nothing's forever except that you're going to pay taxes and be dead in the box at the end of this thing. Those are the only things that are consistent. Everything else can be taken away from you marriage your wife could leave you Gee. um girlfriends your girlfriend could leave you Every, nothing's permanent nothing right. so what's the point of trying to control it wow who helped you develop this mindset you have to just dig deep man no help no and nothing it's in, all, it's in all of us um but you got to search you know what do they say that um when the student is ready the teacher will uh, you know the teacher will show itself to, you know uh, people, I have good wise people that I, I reach out to that are much older than me that have been through a lot that I, I talk to and, um, mentors. 
yeah, of course, of course, you have to have those, especially with all the pressure that we carry. Like you said, it's real. I think the biggest thing is for me has been being vulnerable enough to uh, express that I need help and then getting it and reaching out to people that are wiser than me in a lot of different areas, but everybody's got their own um, expertise, right? So like if I wanted expertise in how to build uh, a show from scratch all the way to the top, I would reach out to my friend Ariel. If I wanted to, if I wanted to learn how to be the best, mis- the best mixed martial arts in the world, I'd reach out to somebody else. If I wanted to learn how to find peace through everything where we think we're, um, where we're overwhelmed, then I reach out to another person. So it's like, you got to find those people in each Avenue and just try to tap in the best you can. I'm really good at that. When did you first reach out for help? When I, if you could go date all the way back to our interview where I cried after I blew my knee out, mm. that was the very beginning of a very long line of rough years. My twenties were really rough. I made them really hard on myself, um, trying to control everything. One of the consistent, um, mindsets for the past 18 months, two years for me has been surrender as weird as that sounds. But what the, the key thing about surrender is it's not just giving up. A lot of us like tap into that. think it's like giving up. Um, the key to surrendering is that you actually get to receive at the end of it when you do like what comes after you surrender to things. You know, you're not trying to control everything. So when you just finally let go, now what can you receive is mm. the next thing. You know, if we're at war and I, I wave the white flag and I surrender, it's not over. I still got to receive what's coming after that white flag. It could be torture. It could be a brand new house. It could be anything, right? Mm. Um, so I've just learned to receive a lot of the stuff that comes with that. And the biggest thing is not controlling is really giving me a lot of peace especially in a week like this like i can't control any of it i can't control vera how he feels about me i can't control the ufc their organization that's going to do what they want if they want to put me here in, in the interpretation that you put me they will i can't control that um just let go and just let it be what it's going to be because otherwise i'm just going to wind myself up I'm trying to just chill man enjoy this ride it's pretty epic to get this place to be um it's a, it's been a very emotional ride for me to get these opportunities uh just especially with the losses that i've felt when you feel those losses and then you get back on a win streak i just feel so grateful man this is beautiful stuff i really appreciate you uh you sharing this with us do you live with regret everybody has um, a little regret uh, somewhere, but I don't have regret now. I, you know, like you just got to let go. What's the point of it? Like regret, what is that? It's like lack of forgiveness mm. of yourself, shame, right? I mean, that's what I see it as from my experience. So what do I have to be ashamed of? What do I have to be, um, to not forgive myself for? I've I've dealt with those things. By the way, Switching gears, are you surprised O'Malley's fighting Jan? No, that just tells me that he got a he he renegotiated his contract and he's getting paid. <laughs> That's all that means. That's it. It's simple. It's like he wasn't facing the best of the best because he wasn't getting paid to fight the best of the best yet. Now he is. Who do you think wins that one? It's a good question, man. Um, I think the experience factor obviously goes to Jan. And when you watch what Vera did to O'Malley, you got to give credit to that. He finished him. He, he really did. Nobody talks about it because O'Malley's got away with words to make it seem like he's undefeated. But he lost that fight. And um, when you look, the proof is in the results, but it's not MMA math. Like he's got a reach advantage, he's got good footwork. But Jan, I mean, if you look at the way he keeps his defense tight, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a really good fight. What what makes it a super good fight is it's three rounds. O'Malley can really, O'Malley can keep his pace and keep on his bike with his range for three rounds, and that'll support him with his range and his southpaw stance. Um, what supports Jan to me is he can switch stance. He can go southpaw or conventional at any time, 
And he, as we saw with him versus Aldo, he's efficient in both stances equally defensively. So I think defense wins that fight. Whoever has the better defense in that fight wins is what I believe. So we'll see how it goes. What about uh, TJ Aljo? I could Aljo? be calling it though, so I don't know. Okay, okay, huh? yeah, fair. I know. TJ Aljo. Um, that's a tough one too. Like, um, like I said, I don't know. It's, it comes down to TJ stuffing takedowns, which before he fought me, he had 100% takedown defense. So I think that why would that not continue? I think he would be really good takedown defensively. And then if you keep Aljo on his back foot and pressure him being TJ, I think he can do really well against Aljo. But Aljo's big. He's He cuts a lot of weight. He's very strong. And um, it's that's like a, a, a race... But you see what he did to um, to Jan. It's a very similar style fight, and that fight was a toss up, right? But you can't really sleep on on Aljo. If he gets a takedown, he can control you the whole round, and then just take a whole round from you. So that's a tough fight for both those guys. I'm excited to watch it as a fan. Right, and you may be calling it if it's on that same card. By the way, your five rounds this time. It's been a minute since you did five rounds, right? How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's. This is a title fight, you know. Um, they say that it's not, but it is. When you fight five rounds, that's a title fight in my book, mm-hmm. period. So I'm fighting, the way I look at it is I'm fighting Vera for the title right now. That's just how, I, that's how I'm seeing it. This is a title fight for me. I mean, it feels like maybe one away. By the way, uh, Vera's coming up next on the show. Um, I don't know if you want to. Of course. Why? Why, of course. You guys are. Because you're that's what you do, man. What do you mean? You're smart. Oh, okay. This is it says you this is not sorry. You're about to fight each other. You this you guys are the biggest names in the sport right now. This week it's all about Dom and Vera. Exactly. Why wouldn't you have us back to back? That makes sense. You want to talk to him? Is that what you're saying? I don't have any problem. I'm gonna see him on Wednesday. I, I have know. no beef with him. I know. I I was trying to I actually I feel like you're in a very kumbaya state right now. It's uh, like it's actually making <laughs> It's very, like, you're very zen, very happy, very, I, I don't know. I feel like you're in just a great spot. This this warms my heart. Um, I can hear them in the background. I don't know if everybody oh. else can hear me. Oh, I can't even hear. Are they talking? <laughs> oh, they were, yeah, they were, I could hear them talking. Oh, no. Your control. Um, anyways. Did you so, hear what I said? Me off no, what did you Oh, say? I was saying, this warms my heart. It feels like you're in a great spot mentally. It feels like you're happy, you're content, you're you know you're chilling it's five days i would be very stressed i'm not you obviously but it, this is a nice window into your brain your soul before a huge fight first time in san diego you're the king of san diego and mma you've been there for god knows how long well over a decade gives me a little wc vibes i mean i love everything about this thanks man this is great well i'm gonna set up you and Missouli. he might have texted yeah, me right no now problem. No, he didn't. No problem with that. Um, I don't know why he was so angry about them. Like, oh, he was, he was fired up. He was fired up. It'll be interesting to hear about that. Like, if if that anytime somebody gets fired up like that, it's because I said something that's true <laughs> that he already thought. <laughs> I think he didn't like the, the, the insinuation that ahead. they don't have a history, that they don't train. You know, uh, who are these guys to tell me? You know, that type of stuff. Okay, well, let's hear about it. He can tell me how great they are when he talks to me. I think it would be really interesting because he, I mean, he's been in the sport for a very long time. I don't know if you know about his history, Mohegan, ABC. You're one of the brightest minds, but you you have strong conviction. You have very strong, you're not going to be swayed easily. Uh, so I think that you're the right, you're the man for the job, if you ask me. I, By the way, I would even venture to say, I don't know the answer to this. I didn't ask, but like, I feel like even at that seminar that you guys did, you weren't just taking everything that they were giving you. You were asking questions. You were raising your hand. Is that accurate? Yeah, I asked one question <laughs> and they literally wrote me off and said, no, we don't need it to go over that and then change the subject. Oh, that's, how I knew that. that's how you know that it's like they're not open. So, you know, I'm open to learn from Mike Mazzuli. The question is, is he open to learn from me? Uh. If we can come from a place of neutrality and learn from one another. Now we can move together. That's all I want. I'm not here to be right. I'm here to be with. You can't, if you're, if you're there to be right, you're on an island all by yourself and nobody can be there but you. 
is Mike Mazzulli on island? Or is he trying to be with somebody and we can learn from each other and grow the sport together? That's what's important. We'll find out. Uh, for now, though, we'll find out Saturday who's the better man, Dominic Cruz, Chito Bear. One of my favorite main events of the year. I can't wait. I love everything about it. I appreciate you very much, Dom. Good luck to you. Enjoy the week at home. Thanks. And uh, thank you for doing this as always. Great to talk to you. Yep. Have a good day. There he is, Dominic Cruz, former WC and UFC bantamweight champion.